So in this video, we're going to see how we can export a meshed DNA strand uh, made with molecular MyS double stranded DNA kit. So this is a feature that's been requested many times. Um, we do in intend to implement it in the kit soon, but uh, here's how we can do it in the meantime. So we'll first start by extracting the nucleotide geometries from the, the asset and then use a mesh network to duplicate them and create a mesh of the full DNA strand. So in order to do that, we'll need to use some Python code and uh, use some attributes that weren't initially meant to be exposed. So uh, it might seem a bit obscure, uh, but we should fix that very soon. So here's the code. To run that, we need to have the asset selected, so not the group, but the asset. In this first line here, um, we're identifying which uh, node has been selected. Here, we're listing some connections uh, from the asset to identify the DNA node. And then we're creating two groups, so atomic group and uh, surface group that will contain the, the meshed geometries of either the, the atomic meshes or the surface meshes. And so inside the loop, uh, we're creating uh, a mesh. Then we're connecting an attribute from the, DS, uh, from the DNA node uh, to, that new to, yeah, to that new shape. And uh, then we're finding its parent in order to parent it in the, the group here. So we're then repeating the process for the surfaces. So it's a different attribute that we're plugging into the meshes. And when we execute that, if I, so I need to hit control enter. We'll have two new groups. I'm going to move them. I'm also going to assign a material. All right, and so into, inside these groups, we'll have four uh, meshes, which correspond to the four nucleotides. And so this is the atomic version, version and this is the meshed version. So again, we have four meshes. Um, all right. And so depending on the type of representation you want to have, you can either select the atomic or the meshed. So I'm going to select uh, well the meshed representation because they have fewer polygons and uh, will have a better frame rate in, in this video. So let's select them and click on build mesh network. So either from the FX menu or from the mesh shelf. So as soon as we do that, we, well, let me hide the DNA strand. We have uh, some repeats. And if I select um, the mesh distribute node, we can uh, adjust the, the amount of instances. And so what we'll want to do, if I open the node editor, uh, oops, only the inputs, um, yeah, so we'll want to replace uh, the mesh one distribute data that is given to the mesh waiter node by um, some instance data that is available in the double stranded DNA node. So to do that, we could either open the asset and find the node, but there's an easiest way to do that. We just need to type this command um, here. So provided that our mesh waiter is named mesh1, uh, we can enter this command. So we connect instancer data anim to uh, our mesh waiter's input points attribute. We force the connection because there's already something connected here. And so when I hit control, control enter, 
we'll see a lot of nucleotides but uh, yeah they're not oriented properly and that's because we, the DSDNA node is using uh, radians while the mesh node is using degrees so let's create a Python node in the network and uh, edit the code so let me copy that and paste it in the editor all right so here's the code that's in the box here um, this is a, a default code that's just modifying the Y components of the, the objects. So we're going to change that line to out rotation equals MD, MD dot rotation I of element I times 180 divided by pi. So 3.1450. So this will convert the uh, radians into degrees. Oops. So let me copy that and paste it in the Python window. So this um, this is not the same thing. The code that we have here is not the same thing as the code that we have in uh, in the script editor. This is actually a mesh node. So um, yeah, it processes data that it sends to the mesh node which is different from the script editor here, which is the general script editor for, for the whole Maya. So, um, yeah, if we update the frame, we should see that the uh, instances are now properly oriented. But if I change the, so yeah, here I'm selecting the mesh repro node. Uh, so repro mesh, let me open the node editor here. Um, yeah, so the mesh repro node here, we're seeing that we have the, the four geometries instanced here. If I change the order um, of the geometries, we're going to see that all of the instances change and that's because uh, the network doesn't take into account the, the instances ID yet. So to do that, let's go into the mesh waiter node and add an ID node. And now we should have different instances uh, in our mesh. So we need to make sure that uh, these are oriented properly and not oriented properly, but sorted properly. So we need to have uh, five and seven and six and eight. So yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's a bit obscure, but uh, it's how the outputs are, are ordered in the double stranded uh, node. And yeah, so we now have a mesh with uh, the correct uh, nucleotides and if we want to have uh, some shading well th the shading here will be only in the viewport uh, we won't be ex able to extract the uh, export the shading but we will be able to export the uv set associated to, uh, with the well the uvs of the mesh uh, but anyway yeah if we want to shade that here let's go into the molecular maya editor tab Let's go into the representation, color sets, uh, click on meshed representation because that's what I have here and click here. So texturing custom shaders node. Here we have some instructions on, on how to do that. So it tells us to um, select the shader. No, open uh, general editor, connection editor select the asset, DNA asset, reload left, then select uh, our shader. So it's AI standard surface one for me, reload right. And then we need to connect. So either meshed or atomic uh, texture color. So I'm going to select mesh anti texture color and connect that to the base color attribute of my shader. And then we need to activate shading over here. And so we'll see the same color 
that's used by the as what's used by the the kit so once we're happy with our geometry we can export well select the mesh and export that either as an object an obj file so file export selection as obj as uh, apx or as an alembic cache which allows us to export something that's animated so export selection to alembic which can specify the frame rate over here and after exporting um, so an obj and an alembic cache i've imported them in an unreal scene and so this is an example of what we can get so with a low polygon count, we get a really nice frame rate. And uh, the heavier the Alambic cache is, the, the slower the frame rate will be because the, it will uh, require a lot of uh, bandwidth uh, to load the, the cache. Anyways, so by default, uh, you won't get shaded uh, a shaded uh, DNA strand. And that's because the color per vertices are not exported, but we do have uh, the UVs exported. So here I'm using a texture to color uh, the residues. This is the texture that I'm using. So each square in the, the, the well, that square texture represents the color of a single residue. And for the atomic representation over here, this is the kind of texture that we'll want to use. Uh, so the, in the upper part here, um, yeah, we, there seems to be a repeat here. That's because we can shade the resid well, the atoms uh, in the backbone and the atoms in the bases differently. So on the top here, uh, we define the colors of the atoms in the backbone and here uh, in the center, so in the bases. All right, so um, yeah, this concludes the video and uh, we hope that uh, it will help you making creative animations or virtual environments with DNA strands made with molecular Maya's DNA kit.